we're back. We are back, back, back. And uh, before we get into the news, I did want to talk about, uh, well, this is news. I, I'm not before. This is news. Dice Tower East registration is live, live, live. It's live. And if you are interested in going, and you should be, it's in beautiful uh, Orlando, Florida, uh, go to DicetowerEast.com and you can register there. It is a fantastic time. Uh, Chris and Dan, you've both been to Dice Tower East, am I correct? I've that been is twice. incorrect, Mike. I didn't mean at the same time. Oh. Yes. You, you Can you I both went, vouch I went for once the... For me for, and once for Chris. No, Mike, uh, I've never been to Dice Tower. Uh, you said East, oh. right? Yeah, the convention. You've only no. been to Dice Tower West. That is correct. So this will be my uh, first time uh, across the, uh, as we say, across the pond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. what we say? No. <laughs> <laughs> I might go this That's year, fine. Mike. I might go this year. I might do. I, I'm looking at airplane tickets at the moment. Dan, is that the first time we met in person? Unfortunately, yes. 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 That's why. That's why that was the last time I went. The undesirables. <laughs> undesirables there. But that's yes, fantastic. All right. Well, keep in mind, this is a fantastic event. You want to be a part of it? Go to dicetowers.com. All right. One of the best now let's get into the. Before. Yeah. Oh yes. Let's get into the news. I'm going to put on my old man specs, my robotic eyes here. All right. And first up, gentlemen, we've got a, uh, a, biz a bit of business news, a bit of business news. We've got Goliath Games acquiring Endless Games. And um, so Goliath Games, the, the context that I've been familiar with them here recently is that they um, made a deal with Restoration Games to print lighter versions of some of their titles that are going to more mass market stores like Target. Like they have a smaller version of uh, Fireball Island that I'm aware of that, that they're starting to put into those stores. Um, but it also says that they have been, um, let's see here. They've been acquiring their 11th other companies acquisition. Too. What was that? Yeah, 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 that they've been acquiring other companies as well. I haven't really yeah. heard about the other ones. Yeah, this, I hadn't either, but it says the 11th acquisition in seven years. So they've been busy uh, picking up people, you know, companies like Pressman Toy. Um, so, you know, I think it's an interesting idea taking games that are kind of more in the hobby market and maybe shifting them towards more of a mass market appeal. I don't know. Yeah, yeah sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. I've not heard of either of these companies. So, so, but it's, it's nice to have other people buying up people and becoming bigger in order to compete, isn't it? That, that's, that's what's needed. A bit of competition there. They do say the competition is good for the consumer. Is that correct? Uh, they say, well, it's probably better than a monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> better than monopoly. Uh, you heard it here both, <laughs> first. Wow. Yeah. All right. Moving on. This is, uh, this is exciting news. Um, Lucky Duck and Van Ryder teaming up for something. Now, this is just a teaser right now. We don't really have a lot of information. Uh, it's called Dark Quarter, all right? And so they've got this little teaser image here that they've been sharing on social media and elsewhere. Uh, it looks like it's set in New Orleans. Jazz riffs leaked out of the French Quarter, valiantly trying to pierce the sweltering air. The summer of 81. Now, they don't say which 81. Did you notice that? Oh yeah, yeah. It's a, which it's a Bruce, eighty-one? It's a Brian Adams which, song, isn't which, it? Isn't which that, one's going to be, a, Mike? No, that's not <laughs> a Brian Adams song. They're making a ball game of the Brian Adams song. It's uh, <laughs> quite, quite innovative. Alice like Costello, it. Brian Adams, all the <laughs> hits are here, what, folks. <laughs> nothing but the newest, hottest hits. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. This, this looks take... interesting. I just, I just hope it's not going to be Cthulhu. That's all. I hope it's not going to be oh, and there's a mythos underneath it. I hope it's, I hope it's vampires or something a bit, bit more innovative than Cthulhu again. That's that, yeah. That, you know, I'm, I'm you know, Lucky, Duck, Lucky Duck are quite innovative and Van Ryder are innovative. So hopefully they won't go mm. down the same old tropes. Well, these are two great story-driven game companies, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, Lucky Duck particularly has impressed me a lot with their last couple of games, and and so I'm immediately interested. Mm -hmm. uh, Van Ryder, yeah, I, I like their stuff. I haven't tried uh, interestingly enough Hostage Negotiator, which is probably their biggest title. Is that would you would you say that, Mike? Probably, and their graphic novel adventures, which is probably a little more app more in line with what this is going to be doing. But yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then they released that song a, Jump as well, didn't they? They released Jump. <laughs> 
That was good. <laughs> no, no, that's Van Halen. Van oh, Halen. Right. Yeah. Keeping up with the current music trends. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's that's 1984, that, not 81. Uh, okay. Okay. You guys are killing me. It's a cooperative <laughs> game with a dark, gritty, mature narrative. Um, but it's going to be app. Uh, it's going to have app uh, integration. It says uh, groundbreaking app support features featured in Chronicles of Crime and Destiny. So my guess, and it's only a guess, is that Lucky Duck is going to be probably handling more of the app-driven element, where maybe yeah. Van Ryder's handling the narrative element. Just a guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, like see how it unfolds. And it's, That's yeah, yeah. It says this is coming to Kickstarter in 2022. We don't usually talk about stuff, but this is kind of leading up to it. So. Interesting. Oh, this is a wow. That's a big gap for this teaser versus yes. even the, the Kickstarter. Okay. It's I Halloween. That's, that's, that, 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 that's why I there's a theme to all this right news. <laughs> mm, Halloween is right, Dan. I think yeah. you're right. All right. Next up, we've got HeroClix news. Uh, I've never been involved with HeroClix, but I will tell you, I know that people still care about this. Um, and I think a lot of people are going to be intrigued by this. You've got WandaVision, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki, what if characters that are going to be featured in a new HeroClix set. So the kind of the Disney Plus shows that uh, are quite popular, I would say. And uh, so you're going to have these now. Again, I don't know if either of you have played Hero Clicks, but I get the impression that this is something where you can kind of do like Marvel characters versus you can kind of yeah yeah I, yeah, I, yeah yeah you can mix it up. I I can't turn the dials around. That's why I've never played Hero Clicks. Mm. I can't turn I, the I, dials, Mike. Yeah, I think much like all the TV show theme songs, this might have been big before my time or something. You know, right. before I was you know into the hot. But like, it's still around, obviously. But I don't think it's yeah. in its heyday. But I will tell mm. you. I am considering throwing money at that Loki Gator because yeah, the Loki Gator is pretty, is pretty legit. Great. It says uh, these are going to release in March of next year, so if you're interested, keep an eye out for that. All right, moving on. Next, we've got uh, some puzzle books. I've been seeing more and more of this type of a thing where they're taking board game properties and kind of leveraging them into more puzzly type things. Um, they've already done this with uh, Takan, uh, with Catan. I said Takan, uh, Catan. And now they are using uh, Ticket to Ride and Unlock to create puzzle books uh, based upon those series of games. It says the Catan puzzle book was 100 puzzles, and these will likely also have 100 puzzles as well. So I don't know. Does this sound of interest to you guys? Yeah, well, the, the the unlock thing feels like it almost it's come full circle because it feels like right. that kind of started in the in puzzle book right. type territory. Yeah. Certainly, those those kind of adventure puzzle books have been around for a long time. But I think I think unlock sounds like a great ticket to ride feels like a cash in to me. But that's my cynical my cynical head. But unlock really feels sure. like it will fit. I'm I'm right there with you, Dan. They they did that ticket to ride, um, the like the the the, the car train. Puzzle. The logic puzzle. I feel like that was a, a a more logical step for Ticket to Ride to a puzzle type thing, whereas mm. Unlock is going to be really. I think it'll be really charming in this puzzle. Yeah. So that's the one I'm yep. interested in. And it releases in the UK today, Dan. So you can go to your local haberdashery Dan, and come back, come back. today. Yeah. I'm off. Also, I don't think you'll find it at a haberdashery. All right, here we go. Moving up next. No, no, you'll find it at the chemist, Mike. <laughs> That's right, boots. All right, uh, coming up next, we've got a expansion for a game that I feel like just released, uh, Rift Force. Um, I think we just got Rift Force in the studio here recently, a two-player card duel, and they've already announced a uh, expansion that's scheduled to release in Germany in late March of next year with English, French, and Spanish editions coming afterwards. So, Chris, I don't know if you saw this coming through the uh, studio at all, or Dan, if you're I, familiar I, with it at all. I read through the rules on it. It sounds like a, an interesting take on kind of a uh, Lost Cities or Hanabekoji type thing, right? Yeah. Uh, line across the middle, you put cards of different numbers on either side, but you can activate them to like attack the other side. So it's a little more mm -hmm. of a head-to-head -head type thing. Uh, yeah. And I, I didn't play it. I think Z either reviewed it or is is going to or something. But okay, it it seems prime for expansions, right? Because each yeah, for sure. You you mix four or five different types of wizards out of eight. Throw in Gills. four more wizards. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. for sure. Hmm. Don't know. I like the art. I'll say that much. You like the? I remember this is that was a point of controversy. The the fire person versus ice person staring at each other on the cover. 
Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I just I tend to like Miguel Coimbra's art. I know this is you know maybe not for everyone, but I like it. Okay. Yeah, I think it looks all right. Okay. Moving on, we've got the uh, the LCG that will never die, Arkham Horror, the card game. They have released a new, or uh, they've announced a new scenario pack that's going to release January 21 of next year, Machinations Through Time. Um, do Have either of you played Arkham Horror card game? I've only played it like once or twice, but I know it's very, very, very popular. I know Z loves it. Now, nah, Roy, too. I, I, I've played it. It is very, very good. Um, I'm mm -hmm. not very good at deck building, so mm -hmm. I ended up just get, making progressively worse and worse characters until I couldn't get through <laughs> anything. Um, <coughs> basic, basically, but um, yeah. is, it, is this is this going to be one of the first ones that because they've they've stopped doing big long like five or six month releases, you know, with little packs all the way through and start doing one off scenarios? Is this going to be one of the first ones of those, or have they already started doing that? I wonder. Uh, yeah, um, you know. I'm not sure. I'm not they, sure. It says a standalone model, cooperative scenario. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. says it's a standalone cooperative scenario or can be added to a campaign. So, yeah. Who See, knows? As as a person, I've never played. Uh, this is one of the games I do want to get played because of how of all the good I hear about it. But from a somewhat outsider perspective, it's so hard for me to want to jump in because I I feel like they keep changing the form factor of the game. Right. Like this right. looks like an individual little blister pack. And they just announced they're going to stop making small things and combine the big boxes. And I don't know which way it's going. I'm sure yeah, the chat's going to yeah. eviscerate me. But Chris, it's really obvious. But I just, it's so <laughs> hard to jump into a card game like this, like an LCG, if I you, think if you, if start you didn't with jump the stats, in early. Yeah, you start, because it's a cooperative, you don't need to worry about the meta or anything like that. So you could just start yeah. with the starter deck. And then yeah. from the starter deck, you start pack, you can tell whether you're going to like it or not. It, it, it's the best... One of the best ways of developing a narrative I've ever played in any game, including ones with apps and all that kind of stuff. It does a wonderful mm. job of of developing the narrative. It just, it just, I just like winning more than it lets me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's difficult. All right, so uh, next up, and, and Roy, in the interest of time, what I'm gonna probably do, and I'm letting Roy know because he kind of runs through these slides, is I'm gonna talk just briefly about each of the games and then that last slide about this Trick or Treat Games, we'll talk a little bit more about it. But this is a new game studio, Trick or Treat Games. Uh, they had a booth at Gen Con where they had some prototypes. They, now, I don't think any of their games are available as of yet. But it says uh, the first four titles that we're going to be looking at are scheduled for release in the first half of next year and then many others planned. So this, I think, is really, really an interesting kind of a model because they've got this unified thematic thing where they're all going to be kind of spooky themed games. Uh, so let's just briefly go through the games that they've announced. And then again, at the end, we'll kind of talk a little bit more about it as a whole. First up is uh, from designer Richard Garfield, which I, a new up and coming designer that, uh, you know, uh, Richard Garfield may be a little familiar from Magic the Gathering, among others, called Creature Feature. All he's right. still got to prove um, himself in my books, yeah. You know. <laughs> that's right. He's still, he's unproven, but uh, yeah, uh, an up-and-coming designer. So Creature Feature, all right, so it looks like a card-driven game. Um, next up, we've got a game called Blood Orders. Now, this actually is from a new designer, um, Nick uh, uh, Badakaliat. Yeah, okay. Uh, all right, uh, two to four players. Powerful but disgraced vampires exiled from a centuries-old order. All right, so again, this horror theme kind of carrying through. We have a very established designer. We have a new designer. Uh, our next one that has been announced is Troll Fest. This is a three- to six-player game, a co-design from uh, Bruno Faiduti and Camille Mathieu. And, uh, you know, Faiduti definitely has a, a particular style Three to six player count makes me think it's going to kind of maybe have a little bit of, you know, the hallmarks of his, maybe some simultaneous card play, things along those lines. He actually did a design diary about this already. And then uh, the last one that's been uh, announced is this World Z League by David Gregg. And this one you can see has some like uh, constructs, looks like cardboard constructs and zombie figures that you're flicking rubber bands at to knock over. I'm yeah. sold. Right. I'm, yes. I'm, in. I'm in. Any game you can lose an eye in, I'm in. <laughs> That's absolutely right. So this new company, right, these are the first four that they've already announced. And those are, I think, potentially exciting enough in and of themselves. You've got, you know, some established, well-known designers, mm -hmm. some newer designers, kind of a, a, a an aesthetic all the way around. 
But they also have other things that they've announced that to me are very, very exciting. They've talked to uh, Richard Lanius, who's gonna be doing something that is kind of got the, the Arkham Horror type of mechanics, but in a different uh, universe, a Blade Runner Fifth Element type universe. Um, He's gonna be doing something that is potentially based in the Halloween IP, as well as Emerson Matsuchi, who is doing something that is like Spectre Ops, but based around Halloween, where one character is Michael Myers and everyone else is trying to escape from him. Um, you've got a redo of Reiner Knizia's Dream Factory or Tom, uh, Trom Fabrique, which is based around movie making, but it's going to be horror movies. So oh, yeah, I think okay. all of those are incredibly exciting. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, you may have seen some of these masks that Tom is fond of wearing, like this creature mask. And I think uh, Z, or not Z, Z. Uh, Chris might be showing a mask right now. I can't see him on my screen, but I'm thinking he is. The company that is doing these made those masks. So they are an established company that have done kind of horror themed things, and now they're getting into the board gaming market. I think it's pretty exciting. Yeah. What's your cool mask, Dan? Uh, my cool, I'll, I'll put my cool mask on. I've, I've got oh, it on. Oh, let's there. see. There we go. Look. <laughs> Where's the mask? Where's the mask, Dan? I can't I can't say rude words to you because we're on the dice that is tower, Mike. But, but, that is um, correct. Yeah. Uh, Very yeah. nice. No, this is good. I'm not Cthulhu in sight, other than other than myself. That's obviously, right. Which, which That's is, right. Which is really, really good. They also make air fresheners, Mike, which they do. Confused me a little bit. That's what it says on oh, your I did. on your thing. So I uh, did not know that. Very interesting. So oh, sure. You know, hey, you've you got to diversify, Dan. Revenue streams. It's all about the revenue streams. I, I think it's about time I had an air freshener um, themed things. board game, Mike. Uh, <laughs> I think you are play, correct. Plug in the board game. Uh, I, don't I know. love it. Yeah. I would have a Mars Attacks air freshener, you know. Ah. Right? So yeah, this All company right. has has access to lots of IPs and everything. Mm, so yes, I mean, interest to see whatever whatever stuff they come out with. The, a whole the really, horror. They've really come out with again? a bang as well, haven't they? Which is, which is cool. It's yeah. just a shame. Look, looking at the the news app, it's a shame they couldn't get things released now, which they obviously wanted yeah. to, but because of the shipping sure. issues. Um, just, yeah, they missed the that that Halloween week, which is a shame for them. But but no. It, it, it sounds really interesting. Sounds like they're doing some interesting things, especially the yeah, last band one. Buying that, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a whole catalog of nothing but spooky games. You know, it sounds like it could get repetitive, but the look of all four of these, even though they're all in the horror kind of theme, they all look mm -hmm. very different. So uh -huh. I'm interested. Yeah. I'm interested. All right. Uh, just in the interest of time, we're going to wrap up here, and it's going to be pretty brief because we actually talked about this on uh, Crowd Surfing yesterday. This is Risk Shadow Forces, which is uh, on a pre-order now from Hasbro, and and uh, they've got. It's not pre-order. It's Pulse. No, no. I'm saying yeah, it's called Pulse, but they're calling it a pre-order. Oh, never mind. Uh, okay, I was just trying to yeah, well yeah. actually you. Yeah, well, you can take that well, actually, and, and uh, return to sender. Okay, uh, and it's got the Avalon Hill uh, the, you know, logo on there. It's going to be basically a kind of a new legacy game. Risk Legacy is kind of the one that started all those legacy games. I know a lot of people are excited about it. I want to say the price point was somewhere in the $70 to $80 range, uh, but you can check that out. And again, uh, we did talk about it a bit on Crowdsurfing yesterday, and um, so... Interesting, but uh, I know a lot of people be excited about that. Mm -hmm. All right, and that is the news, ladies and gentlemen, because we need to keep things moving. We, we, uh, we've got a couple of more contributors for you, and then we will come back to see you off.